my name is Sarah Perez Battles. Welcome. I'm here to tell you about an approach to teaching that takes into account the cognitive and social emotional development of adolescents. This video is meant to give you a basic understanding of adolescent development and give you tips so that you can teach in a developmentally appropriate way. Now let's get started. First, let's start with cognitive development. Many think that the average American teenager is lazy and dumb. However, their brains are just as busy as they were when they were babies. No wonder why they need so much sleep. When discussing adolescent brain development, we must note that their prefrontal cortex, or PFC, located in the front of the brain, is not fully developed, which explains their often impulsive behavior. If you have a student in your classroom that does or says something that seems rude or irrational, you can often chalk it up to the PFC. They might not even fully understand why they did something or understand the consequences. It is important to take this into account when disciplining students. Adolescent brains are becoming capable of abstract thought and they're asking big philosophical questions about themselves and the world around them. At the same time, they're developing the ability of perspective taking and are understanding perspectives other than their own. As a teacher, this can be an exciting time to weave in philosophical or moral questions into our lessons, as well as presenting multiple perspectives that the students will eagerly engage with as they stretch their new cognitive muscles. Presenting multiple perspectives in the classroom is also a fantastic way of incorporating students' own background and culture and bringing it into the classroom. Now, let's talk about the social and emotional side of the adolescent mind. You might be wondering why you have a student that comes in looking like a pink-haired punk one day and a football jock the next. Well, it has to do with Eric Erickson's stages of development. In particular, children ages 12 to 18 go through what Erickson categorized as role confusion versus identity. Meaning that adolescents at this age are searching for themselves through exploration. They are questioning their goals, their personal values, and their beliefs. It is important to understand that although adolescents are now capable of perspective taking, their ability to compare often leaves them feeling as if all eyes were on them. Socially, they have a desire to fit in while also finding their independence. As teachers, we must understand that our students might be feeling vulnerable and that we therefore must make ourselves vulnerable to them as well. Taking the time to build relationships and a safe learning environment built on mutual respect is imperative. Let's discuss classroom culture a bit more. We have found that when students are involved in creating the classroom culture, for example, by defining norms, you are not only setting expectations, but are also creating a sense of belonging, respect, and community, both with you, the teacher, the peers, and the individual. So now that you've created a positive classroom culture, how do you get your students to engage? They're so unmotivated. This is a frustration that I've heard from numerous teachers. However, their seemingly uninterested attitude has nothing to do with their capacity to learn and everything to do with the way that the classroom is structured and the way that the information is presented to them. Think to yourself, would you be engaged if you sat at a desk for six hours a day listening to a teacher lecture? Even teachers who open up the floor to conversation don't always make information accessible to all their students because of the limited ways that information is presented to them. By teaching in a multimodal way that involves images, music, videos, and movement, we not only keep the information fresh, 
but we are able to reach more students through the format that works best for them. We have a tendency of rewarding and punishing students. We've created a system that relies on extrinsic goals rather than creating intrinsic ones. By creating a student-centered classroom that focuses on presenting multiple perspectives in a variety of different instructional approaches and cultivates an attitude that says every student can learn and succeed, we're able to harness adolescents' innate desire to learn and ask questions. Now, let's review some of the things that we've learned in this video. Number one, building relationships. By cultivating a positive classroom culture, you can not only engage your students more effectively, but you can also build relationships based on trust, respect, and vulnerability. By getting to know each individual student, you get to know their background and their culture, what works for them in a learning environment, and what might be impeding their learning. Number two, multiple perspectives. By getting to know your students, you can incorporate their own personal background and culture so that they see themselves reflected in the classroom. You can also make sure that you present multiple perspectives when learning about a subject matter. Number three, multimodal. Whether your students voice it or not, you might have different types of learners in the classroom. Make sure that you present information in a variety of different ways in order to best fit your learners and to keep information fresh and exciting. Number four, be aware of the cognitive and social emotional development of your students. You can actually intrinsically motivate your students by feeding on what they are doing cognitively and socially. By incorporating big philosophical questions, they will be more engaged in the classroom and less wanting to please you based on rewards and goals. If you enjoyed this video, you can find many others like it on our website at www.chs.com or you can find a CHS workshop near you. Till next time.